Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Carol here. Um, I'd like to share with you today a friendship journal page that I've made for somebody and um, I'm about to um, take to the post. Um, it's very much along the vintage um, monotone colour theme um, and I've used predominantly throughout vintage papers um, and laces that I have in my stash. So let me take you through it. Um, anybody that saw the um, Friendship Journal entry page that I made for Rachel of Roxy Creations will probably recognise this paper. This is um, genuine indenture paper. Um, it's a thick parchment, much thicker than the parchment that um, we craft on. It's almost got like a, a waxy feel to it. It's very durable. It won't tear. Um, and this is what they used to make um, property deeds out of in um, many, many moons ago. Um, and I'm lucky enough to have a little bit of it. And this is actually a piece of the same um, paper that I made Rachel's out of. So I decided to um, make this one using the same papers. I just love the handwriting and somebody will have written this by hand um, with ink um, but it's just absolutely lovely. Anyway, I digress, sorry. Um, I've topped it at the top here with some vintage lace from my stash and some contemporary lace. I've made one of these little um, lace snippet page tabs that um, the Mountain Girl did they are her I think she calls them her rustic um, tabs and I've used a um, rusted safety pin with a little glass bead on it um, obviously some lace layered up a little vintage button and then I've used a scrap of calico that I've stamped on and I know that somebody's going to ask me about these pieces um, what I've used is this is um, just some heavyweight calico that I got from Amazon um, and it's lovely stuff it tears beautifully it's gorgeous to stamp but it's quite heavyweight um, love using this and this is the stamp set that I've used and it's a Stampers Anonymous stamp set there we go and it's called Field Notes CM I think that's CMS 396 and when I saw this stamp set oh I went mad because there is so much on here that I will use time and time again in my journals just so much and as you can see this stamp here is this one here so um, this is again calico pocket that I've frayed and stitched on and this, I will show where this comes from in a moment, but it is a genuine Inland Revenue property seal. And you probably can't pick that up on camera, but it's embossed. It's just lovely. Um, so this is the tag that I've popped in the pocket. And it's just layered up vintage papers. And I've used um, one of the front covers of one of my books to stamp on. And then that's the back with one of the embellishments from the end of the chapters in my Bismarck book there. And that's a Tracy Fox label. And I'll show you at the end how I've made these little faux whale tail tabs, if anybody's interested. Um, you probably all know about it, but I happened to be chatting to somebody recently who didn't. Um, so I just thought that I would do, do a very, very... Um, quick tutorial just so that you know how to make any size of these little faux whale tail tabs if you haven't got one of the punches. Okay so that's my tab in the pocket. These are a couple of little um, flashcards that I've backed with computer paper and these flashcards are from one of the um, Ranger ephemera packs. This one is uh, was Expedition. Now the pack isn't this size, I've got two or three 
in here and they're all various sizes um, and I find this is the best way for me to actually store them is to put them in a, a bag like this so I've got two or three sets in here um, and I just dig them out when I want them if I put if I give you that information on the back if anybody's interested for hunting these out you might be able to find them that's not going to focus if I give you that it says th hashtag th93115 okay so that's the ephemera I've used um, there is a side pocket here with a thumbprint and this revenue tag was on the bottom here this is more of my um, my property deeds but this isn't parchment this is like um, lightweight cardstock that they did later conveyances on um, but I just love the scroll work on here and wanted to use it um, laid it up with vintage ledger paper and um, book pages and the same on the bank back and this is um, more of the end page of one of my books and I just love how some of the print has ghosted through from the uh, opposite page and then also I've just put a little bit of washi wide washi on the um, the back as well to add some interest okay going inside here we go vintage lace across the top here um, you can put stuff underneath there if you wanted to and have it as a top top tuck but I decided not to this is one of the ranger salvage tags that just goes in the pocket there this is um, an ex libris book plate that was in the front of one of my books that I just photocopied and aged a bit laid it up put some pattern paper on um, some mini tags and somebody asked the other day what I use to make these tiny tags and it's one of these there we go tiny um, tag punches from um, stamping up so that's that um, vintage button with some crochet cotton through it and I've just laid it up with vintage book pages um, this is one of the end caps that um, I so love and I think this is an Artie Mays uh, label so that sits in that pocket um, I've collaged this pocket um, music paper and more of the sewing pattern this is um, as you can see one of these uh, slides that um, I've pushed the slide out and just covered it with um, book page and I think it was Grammy's keepsakes um, had an excellent tutorial on how to get this um, film piece out of your um, Kodachrome slide um, casing without damaging the casing I did a video recently and I'll put the link down below for how you can replace that um, by cutting the slide open but if you don't want to um, replace the film and you just want to have it as a frame then she showed a really easy way of getting the slide out and all you do is support the edge here or on this side whichever size is easiest for you I'm um, right handed so it's easier for me to support it on my left hand side so you support it and then with your thumb you just gently push back and the slide or the film if I hold that up to the camera just pushes out so you do the same on the other side and push it out and then the whole of the slide will just pop out a little bit more pressure is needed at the top I found with mine but it comes out and gives you an absolutely perfect frame and then you can do with this bit exactly as you want um, but isn't that awesome that was so good so thank you so much for that in inspiration um, so that's what I've done here I've popped out one of these um, films I've covered that over layered up a Tracy Fox label and then made a little tag to go inside and this is actually a genuine vintage photo um, that I've actually cut down this is the rest of the photo here and this is an old family photo <laughs> I don't know whether she'd be pleased about this but um, 
this little girl here, that's my mum when she was a little girl and this was when she was at Brownies. So I thought I would use that photo or part of that photo in there. Um, the lovely lady that this is going to um, sent me a beautiful um, envelope and inside I just thought that the inside papers were amazing so I thought I would reuse the envelope so I cut it down because it was a DL size. Um, I cut it down and I trapped inside it um, between two peach pieces of packaging this piece of vintage lace and the lace is quite fragile so I wanted to protect it and this is I've only got a small piece of this lace and this was the the best piece uh, or the perfect piece um, some of the other piece um, along the strip was um, falling apart but this is the best piece so I wanted to put it inside so all I did was cut a window put it between some um, packaging and sandwiched it in there and I've covered the envelope with some of the Ranger collage tissue paper and then some um, sewing pa patterned tissue paper on the top so that it would um, tie in with the rest of um, the little spread going over the page um, these are more of the ephemera pieces, but there are some vintage um, tickets of my own from my stash that I've included in here. I think there's about three in here, um, but lots of other little bits and bobs that are um, from the Ranger ephemera pack. I've just, this is the um, Sizzix, Ranger Sizzix. I think it's called a photo die, so you've got lots of little slots. Um, and I've just collaged the bit at the bottom and then um, stamped again on some calico and stuck that on the bottom. Some vintage buttons here to make a closure top and bottom. And there's nothing in this envelope, but as you can see, that piece of lace is well and truly protected so you could put something in this pocket quite um, or this envelope pocket quite happily and then it just closes like so thought I'd try something different normally I use vintage buttons for my closures when I do them like this I call them um, wage tag closures or salary tag closures but I decided to do eyelets for a change more of the vintage lace so Daisy, more of the vintage lace top and bottom. This pocket, I've done the same procedure as here, laid it up with the Ranger collage paper and then tissue paper on the top and then stitched and glued on this vintage lace. And this is just a scrap of Ranger paper um, with an eyelet and a safety pin through it and more of the lace up there. And then this is one of the Sizzix wildflower dies, which I've just glued on and put a bit of number washi tape um, at the bottom. And then again, just a, a layered up tag, vintage lace here, Tracy Fox label. Um, and then this is one of the tag toppers. Now, I don't know who first came up with this idea, um, but the inspiration is is absolutely lovely. Um, it is a take on these rustic tabs that um, Mountain Girl did um, on her channel. And um, I'm not sure if she did these or if Kathleen Sunsby um, came up with the idea to use them as tag toppers. But either way, thank you both ladies for the inspiration because I love doing this. Um, so here I've just used a vintage safety pin. I have put some contemporary lace, another one of those little miniature um, tags that I punched out, vintage button and some of the vintage laces that I've used throughout um, this little spread. And then on the back, just collaged, and this is some more of the stamped calico fabric. So that goes in the pocket there. And then over the page, I've made a corner tuck spot using this piece of um, fabric, which I just thought was beautiful. Um, this is one of the uh, ephemera pieces from Ranger and I loved that it was this grey colour which would pick up this brownie grey on here and I've just backed it with some vintage computer card. This is a um, 
printable. It was Amity Bloom's latest um, digi kit. And all I did was I printed it out on this lovely vellum that I was given. And it just looks amazing. It actually looks like I have the original of this. Um, and it just almost looks as good as the original. So I was delighted how that came, came out. So that just tucks in that pocket there. And then at the top here, I've printed out another piece of that Amity Bloom latest digi kit. And again, I've printed that out on the vellum. And I just love how this looks. It's got a lovely feel to it and um, really does feel like it's in keeping with what I've tried to do here with this um, this page. So that is my um, friendship journal um, piece. I hope you like it and that will be going out shortly or on Monday when I go and do my essential food shopping in the post to the lovely lady who um, I'm sending it to. So thank you so much everybody for watching and I hope you like it. Um, and then just very quickly before I go, I will show you how to make these faux um, whale tail tabs. I'm one of the lucky people that has one of these. Um, I've had it for years, uh, really robust. I got it from Stamping Up and it is still going strong. And um, as you can see, I have happily today been stamping out um, some whale tail tabs for uh, a friend of mine. And it was only really um, whilst I was in conversation um, that I was asked if I had a smaller tab punch than she had. And I said, no, what I do is I don't have a tab punch at all other than my whale tail tab um, what I do is I print I print I punch out a tab like so fold it in half and then I take my scissors which are now on the other side of the room so excuse me one second I don't know what they're doing there scissor fairies obviously nick them so what I do is I just chop uh, a straight line from this corner here to this corner here like so I can't cut bread in a straight line, so um, I'm winging it here, so please excuse me. <laughs> and then I have a straight edged tab for the side of my page, like so. So I get two uses out of my whale tail um, punch, so I'm really lucky there. Um, but also the other thing um, was that you actually don't need a whale tail punch if you have um, any circle punches um, this is an X cut one inch circle punch um, I'm lucky I have a three quarter inch and a half inch punch um, you can use any whoops any or all of these to create um, a faux whale tail and all you need to do is punch out your circle like so, fold it in half, and I'm sorry if, if this is not new to you, but um, I kind of think, well, I'm happy to learn anything new any day, so I just thought if somebody hasn't seen this, then, um, you know, it's great, isn't it? You know, it might be the best thing since sliced bread for you. Now, you once you've folded your um, circle in half, you can use any size, um, circle punch or even um, a corner chomper or one of these hole punches or even a pair of scissors to create your whale tail. Now the reason I don't tend to use the same size circle punch for creating the corners is because once you've chomped one corner you have got very little left to hang on to the other side corner. So I tend to go to the next size down, but you can very much use the same size punch. Um, I like to use this little um, half inch circle um, punch and all you need to do, you can measure it, but all I do is eyeball it. I put that 
little corner in and I just chomp it away and I do the same on the other side I mean as I say you can very much eyeball it or measure it and it creates the cutest little faux whale tail punch um whale tail tab and depending on what size punch you have you can make any size absolutely any size and if I show you one where for example so that's one um, I've got another circle that I've punched out here now I'll show you one where I use this now I'm not so keen on using this corner chomper because it gives too much of a curved edge for me um, it's that's that one and if you compare it with that one this one is more curved there's very little in it but this is the one I prefer I'm probably being way 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 too pedantic um, and then finally let me show you another one and then I will leave you in peace for the day you can really easily just take your scissors and chop the corner across and then you've got another one and really they couldn't be easier these you just pop let me just pop it on your page oh so small pop it on your page like so so these are ideal if you're doing little tiny tags like this one um, and you just want a little one of these to go on the top um, so there you go I hope if you haven't seen that that <laughs> it's made your day and made you realize that if you don't have a whale tail punch you don't need one um, because I understand they are retired now and they're like um, hen's teeth to, to get hold of. So thank you so much everybody for watching um, and take care. I hope you're all staying well and um, happy and finding plenty of time to craft with all the coronavirus situation going on around you. Stay well, stay safe everybody. Bye bye now.